Being corrected and trained is a privilege. Being corrected and trained or given instruction is a privilege. Someone cares for your destiny. You need to celebrate that. And here's why. Going back to Hebrews chapter 12, we find, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. My son, not my orphan, my son. You see, in the end, you win. Sons and daughters receive the inheritance. You receive correction of father's house, you have father's house. Orphans don't inherit anything. In fact, as I said previous weeks, you may know people that have had 35 jobs in two years. They'll not submit. They have nothing. They're not prospering. They don't have nothing. They end up in their life nothing. They never submitted to the discipline, the track that God leads them on. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 7. We read this earlier in our previous uh, sessions. Proverbs 5, verse 7. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her, uh, referring to the adulterous woman. Do not go near her door, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel, lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan. When your flesh and body are spent, you will say, how I hated discipline. How my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors. And I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. How could you get in trouble in God's assembly? You did not listen. Did not listen. Let me give you some quick scriptures. All of these out of Proverbs. You'll see them on the screen. Proverbs 12.1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. A fool spurns a parent's discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. Mockers resent correction, so they avoid the wise. Whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. Listen, God has a great future for you. Will you submit to him, his process? You know, it's interesting. I told you about the company, how we started that business years ago. How we started television. It was a struggle, I'll tell you. We had to, we had to die to ourselves. We had to submit. We had to be like that balloon where pressure allowed us to increase our capacity, change our processes, change our vision. And it was painful. I'll be honest, it's painful at times. But yet it yields great fruit like the story I'm gonna show you right now. It started out on the sofa being sick one day, but it started a couple hours before that where I was just having it out with God. I was totally disenchanted with my life. Where, and I had a good life. I married the, the, a wonderful man. I had a wonderful daughter. And what I found is that everything that I was doing, I wasn't going anywhere. I felt defeated, a dream. Every dream I had, it just never got there. So it got to the point where I just gave up. And I just told God I didn't know if I believed him anymore. And I actually fell asleep on the sofa. And I actually awoke to Pastor Gary, who I did not know at the time. He was on Sid Roth's show. And when I woke up, he was giving answers to these questions I had just talked to God about. I immediately went to my computer, and I am not computer savvy at all, but I Googled Pastor Gary, and I found him on YouTube. It was like I was on a mission. I was like in a graduate program. I listened to every one of his um, YouTube videos because I was so hungry, and I was so deficient of any knowledge of what he was talking about, this kingdom thing. Being in church, had no idea. I had the rules down path. I was going to church all the time. I thought I was good, a good Christian person. It was like the scales that were cemented on fell off and I couldn't get enough. What is he gonna say next? I felt like it was a suspense novel that I was getting answers to as I was going along. 
And I was, it was, it was addicting. I didn't even know that he had this church. I figured, oh, this online thing. And I started going to his church online. So he was like my new pastor. His teaching was so simple and easy for me to understand that it just opened the door of, you need to know who God really is. Because I always thought the Bible was a history book. It gave me the account of everybody's life, but it wasn't really living, it wasn't, it, what did it do for me? It gave me just stories. So I decided to give God a challenge. And I said, God, I'm gonna stand on one of your scriptures and I'm gonna ask you, and I'm gonna know that if I stand on the scripture, which was 1 John 5, 14, you know, this is the confidence we have that if we ask, right? And I'm gonna believe for the first time in my life that what I'm gonna ask you right now, if it comes to pass, then I know I'm in the right place. And so what I asked for was something that I knew was impossible for me, but it was a something that I really wanted to do because I'm an interior des designer. I said, I wanna decorate the White House for Christmas. That was what I wanted to do. I knew it was impossible. I didn't even know where to start. So what I ended up doing was, okay, now that I asked God this, I decided, okay, I'm gonna write to Mrs. Trump because she just, you know, became first lady. But she wasn't in the White House at that time. She was still in New York with her son. And I go, well, if I send this to the White House, she's never gonna get it. But I knew Ivanka was in the White House. So I go, you know what? I'm sending two letters. I'm sending one to Ivanka and I'm sending one to Mrs. Trump. And Lord, you're gonna, you're gonna make it happen. It's gonna happen. I sent them very late, it was in August. And um, one day I was in a hurry, I had to go to a client's house. So I go on my computer and all of a sudden I see White House. And I go, my heart just started <laughs> going crazy. So I clicked it on and it said, congratulations, you have been accepted to decorate the White House. And I was one of 70 chosen across the nation to do that. This was the first time in my life I literally, I felt electricity through my whole body. It was like, thank you, Father. It, it was transformational. It was like he was right in the room, right in front of me, giving me this gift. And it, that changed my life. It just changed my life, because then I knew at that point, life was never gonna be the same. One last hurdle I had to go through. I am petrified of flying, because I had had a very bad experience. And here I was gonna have to go by myself. My husband wasn't able to go with me, and I was gonna have to be on this plane by myself. And I will tell you, I came so close to saying, no, I can't go. No, I can't do this. Again, the devil was there to say, you're gonna fly by yourself. You know, he's putting those little, little comments in my head. And as I'm sitting on that plane, looking out the window, I closed my eyes and I prayed, dear Jesus, you need to be here right now because you know how scared I am. And as I got my eyes closed, I feel somebody sit next to me. And I open my eyes and it's this young man and his name was Samuel. And I go, a nice biblical name. And as we're talking, we had talked the whole time until we landed in Washington, D.C. I hadn't even realized that I had taken off. I hadn't even realized there was really up in the air, nothing. So he sent me off to Washington, D.C., fully equipped and fully ready for the adventure that I would have with decorating the White In the White House, you're there seven days. You're there during Thanksgiving, so you give up your Thanksgiving for your with your family. So these people that are obviously from across the nation, and I had to meet, right? And so um, we're in little small groups, and I was fortunate again to be chosen to do the official White House Christmas tree in the Blue Room. I talked to maids and Secret Service and the electricians and everybody, because I'm kind of a very curious person, and I wanted to know, because you know the climate of the Trump White House, and I was a little nervous about that because, you know, you were... everybody couldn't say enough things about the first family. Like I said, I felt God was just reassuring me and just giving me, 
He just gave me peace and comfort, and it just made me really think about life and where God put me and why did he put me here? You know, it was kind of, I was conflicted because there was so much going on in this whirlwind of this wonderful experience, really. It was, like I said, we, we decorated for seven days and when it was done, Mrs. Trump gave us a wonderful, wonderful banquet. I mean, it was literally like we were the king and queen of England. It was a spread you, would, <laughs> you wouldn't believe. And it was such a gift from God. The Bible no longer is this history book. This Bible is a living, breathing document for me. It's like the Constitution, a living, breathing document that I can count on because God is there and he's in those words. And hey, I'm taking it to the bank. I can't thank Faith Life enough. I really can. Pastors Gary and Drenda have taught me to run, run to Jesus. Seek the first, the kingdom. Right? So I'm running first to the kingdom before I do anything. That is a great, a great story. I love it. I love it. It's kind of like a Cinderella story, right? Just, it's amazing in the beauty and just such a great story. Well, that's what God has for you. You may be sitting out here today and you think, you know, I wish I had a story like that. Well, why don't you? Why not? Why not? It's your choice. It's your choice. All the promises are yours. What the Bible says, right? But again, we talked about what the enemy wants to do with your life to help you, if you want to call it that, stop you from growing and reaching your destiny. But understand this, God has a pathway of promotion as well. And if you'll submit to that pathway and you'll be coachable, you'll get there. Guaranteed. He is the alpha and the omega. That's the Greek alphabet, the first letter and the last. He will get you from where you're at to where you're supposed to be. He knows how to do that. He's already designed it, already designed it. Only you can get off the train.